so welcome everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna wait uh, for a few more people uh, to roll in. I guess I can start talking about um, the deck this evening. <laughs> it's a bit of a slapdash kind of uh, kind of stream tonight. Uh, it's it's for me. It's been a little bit hard to get super inspired uh, about any any various modern Merfolk builds lately, just because. We haven't really gotten new cards to play with, and there's so much busted stuff going on in the metagame, so it's like, what do we do as Merfolk players? And uh, I guess, you know, the answer is just like, try, try to have a good time while you, you know, while you can, and just do your best. <laughs> don't, don't expect to win too often, and don't get salty and upset if you, if you lose, because you can, you can expect to lose a fair amount, given the state of the format. Um, so this evening, uh, I kind of asked around on Discord what people were thinking uh, would be fun uh, to play on stream, and uh, Blue Black came up as a, as a suggestion with, with sort of Luris and um, a combo approach. So if you check out, you know, this sort of sketch, the outline of the deck, um, it's got sort of the core of, of Merfolk, right? We've got 20 lands, um, including a couple Muta Vaults, well, actually three in this list, um got the got the ether vials uh got the lords got the tricksters got the silver gills couple curse catchers little random here and there at this point like people running curse catchers um i had played it a little bit uh with unsettled mariner just to sort of pile on with the with the taxing effects uh curse catcher spell pierce those kinds of things get a little bit better when you play it with uh with mariner because it just keeps making it harder and harder for the opponent to resolve things in theory at least Couple spreading seas, a couple extra spreading seas in the sideboard. Uh, this is a list that was um, shared with me, so I don't know if this has had any kind of results uh, whatsoever. Um, the numbers are a little bit random. Uh, you can see, uh, okay, so beyond the core, what, what else do we have, right? You've got two Thassa's Oracles. Uh, you guys should be familiar with this card at this point. Um, when it was spoiled, you know, we thought it was trash, but I think there was some understanding that there were some kind of like combo shenanigans to be had with this with this card. And I think in modern, uh, the biggest place by far, unless I'm missing something, um, the biggest place that this card is sort of found is um, in ad nauseum. It's just like a less expensive laboratory maniac. Um, so it seems like the most consistent win condition now for them is just Angel's Grace, Spoils of the Vault, naming whatever, naming uh, Primeval Titan, and they don't find anything, they have zero cards in their library, they play Thassa's Oracle from hand, um, so basically I guess in hand if they do it that way they need Angel's Grace, um, Spoils of the Vault, and Thassa's Oracle, and then you know they just win basically. I've lost to that a whole bunch of times, and I haven't really seen this card outside of Ad Nauseum. Uh, so, I mean, I guess there might be like some, like one or two random people trying to uh, figure out how to make the inverter combo work uh, from Pioneer in Modern. I haven't personally come across it. So, uh, two copies of this spell. Uh, and then we've got three copies of Pure Sight Marrow. Um, both of these are, are two, uh, two blue casting cost, um, two twos, right? Actually, this is a one three, this is a two two. Uh, now, Pure Sight Marrow is, um, is the other combo piece. And this card doesn't look like very much on its face. It's one white-blue hybrid, an untap. Uh, to look at the top card of your library, you may exile that card. So how are we going to, um, you know, sort of break this? And the answer is Paradise Mantle. So Paradise Mantle costs zero to play, one to equip, and it says that uh, the equipped creature uh, basically ha it becomes Birds of Paradise. So uh, you play Paradise Mantle, you equip it onto Pure Sight Marrow, you tap Pure Sight Marrow, it makes blue. You use that blue, and you untap it to look at the top card of your library. Uh, you can do that as many times as you want, um, and basically thus get, get rid of all the cards in your library. So uh, this is a bit of a two-card combo uh, to get you down to zero cards, right? Uh, and then that's when we drop Thassa's Oracle. Uh, if we don't have... Um, you know, the combo lined up, then we're just gonna be playing these two CMC merfolk as just random, hopefully island walking merfolk, and and that'll be that. Uh Meyer Triton. Uh it's another two drop, obviously black merfolk. Um 
from Theros Beyond Death. Uh, it's got a bunch of dead fish floating in the water. Pretty cool art. Seb McKinnon, probably the best in the game right now. 2-1, so still 2-drop with 2 power, sort of baseline merfolk creature. Death Touch, when it enters the battlefield, put the top 2 cards of your library into your graveyard, gain 2 life. So all this putting stuff into your graveyard business kind of synergizes with Luris, right? Because um, Luris lets us cast things from our graveyard. So uh, Meyer Triton comes in, maybe he mills a couple of lords or something. Uh, you play Luris, and now you can start casting creatures uh, from your graveyard. So kind of a nice synergy. I guess maybe that's what they're trying to do with Curse Catcher, like, you know, take advantage of synergy with Luris. But um, I don't know that, that enough people have been playing Luris Folk for there to be like what we could call an actual consensus. But um, from what I've seen uh, from the little conversation that has happened in the Discord, uh, this kind of a synergy isn't really that strong. Like we're going to sacrifice Curse Catcher to maybe kind of make the opponent pay one it usually isn't going to counter something and then with Luris, we're going to use its ability for the turn to replay curse catcher and maybe counter i don't know it's like just not that powerful it's not drawing cards it's probably not really countering spells most of the time uh so curse catcher just in here as like a blue kind of like beat stick that that could potentially counter like a, a thought season on turn one or something like that um unearth pretty powerful um if the opponent tries to kill Luris, uh well they can kill it but then we can play unearth and get it back um if it's not relevant we can cycle it uh just two of these i've seen some lists i think that have like uh, more than two maybe three um and yeah i guess that's it right it's it's mono bloom or folk uh with a black with a little black touch um for unearth to to help make uh, Luris a little bit better help get combo pieces back if the opponent manages to remove them um, Meyer Triton, I guess, probably just seems like exploratory, right? Like they're kind of testing whether it's, um, it works well with Luris and whether it's worth it or not. Um, really not a combo piece, right? Because it's just putting two cards uh, into your graveyard. It's not like milling you out or something. Unless I'm missing something, in which case, of course, um, I'm happy for you guys to just point out whatever it is that I'm missing. Over in the sideboard, we've got the rest of the playset of Spreading Seas, uh, five counter spells to try to back up Curse Catcher, um, four Fatal Pushes. I like to see, um, you know, having some access to removal. Interesting that they've gone with Fatal Push rather than Dismember, which is the favored spell of Mono Blue Merfolk, uh, but Fatal Push, probably the correct choice if you've got access to Black Mana, just because pretty much everything in the format is four CMC or less. And if it's not, it's probably got more than five toughness, like Crystal Brands, right? You're not killing that with Fatal Push, but you're also not killing it with Dismember. Um, Primeval Titan, right? It's like if dis if uh, Fatal Push won't kill it, Dismember probably won't kill it either. So I like the I like the inclusion of Fatal Push. Uh, Luris, obviously, as the companion, uh, probably going to change soon. Um, how these cards work, I think there's an announcement next week. Um, three Nile Spell Bombs, uh, just to uh, help uh, with graveyard oriented center, uh, strategies and um, I guess it's pretty good with Luris right because you can uh, keep sacking it keep drawing a card and yeah that's the deck uh, we've got one uh, canopy land uh, to help you know um, help alleviate flood if we draw too many lands we, we can cycle that a um, little bit skeptical on the three muta vaults but it is a pretty much a, a mono blue list um, just just a tiny bit of black in the deck um, though we will need to have two black sources to be able to actually cast Luris, which is something I imagine the deck wants to do, since it has like the four bubbles, etc. Um, so, uh, we've got three Cavern of Souls, I kind of like that, could even see four, but, um, with, with the requirements of a two-color deck, um, I'd probably want to run like two Muta Vaults, I think I could probably just change this list a little bit, right? I'm gonna trim a Muta Vault and just add like another island. Um, Right, we're, we're going to play not a a ton of games tonight, you know, maybe maybe five or so, and um, I don't want to get screwed by Muta Vault trying to play my two-color deck. So where's my island? I need to change the quantity here. So anyhow, welcome to you guys um, who are with me this evening. If you have any... Um, Suggestions about the list. I'm gonna take these islands out and play islands that I like better. Um, okay, um, so we've got 
our five islands, trimmed one of the Muta Vaults. How many fetches and whatnot do we have? Um, four Dark Slick Shores, two fetches, two shocks. Oh, sorry, I've got three shocks. Not exactly how I would build the list, but I don't feel like tweaking it too much. Um, it's probably fine. If we run into a bunch of burn and we just draw shock lands, it's going to feel bad. Um, but yeah, this is it. Um, since you guys are not really being very chatty uh, this evening, um, I was going to ask if you guys would prefer to see a league or just uh, just play some cues, because I have no idea how this is going to go down. Um, let me see if there's any activity on the Discord. <laughs> no, everybody's just being silent. So I'm going to jump into a queue for now and just sort of see how the deck feels. Mm, okay. Well, we found an opponent right away. That's nice. There was a, an update today to Magic Online. I'm not exactly sure like if they fixed any bugs or anything like that, but when I logged in, um, every now and then they like change some of the sounds, and then if you have the sounds turned off in your settings, they'll uh, like change your settings so that the sounds are on, just in case you really love like their new sounds. And it's like, yeah, I don't really want to hear your stupid sounds, wizard, so... <laughs> Thanks for turning them on, but I'm just going to turn right back off. Well, this looks like a reasonable uh, opener. Opponents mulliganing, they don't have a uh, companion. Could be nice if it's a, like a counterspell deck. Just push our creatures through. It doesn't look like it's a counterspell deck. Uh, but we do have no black sources in hand that are going to be able to help cast Luris. Um, so let's see what the opponent takes here. I imagine a lord. I mean, we've got redundant lords, redundant combo pieces, but um, not particularly close to do anything, doing anything with this guy. Ah, they took the bauble. That's like the stupidest possible choice. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I don't get to see my opponent's hand. My, oh, Merfolk, my first modern deck. That's what the opponent is saying. Sweet. Um, the M in my name stands for Merfolk. Um, okay, so we all see Luris and uh, yeah, Watery Grave. I'm happy to reveal that to the opponent. Um, just get that much closer to getting, uh, getting Luris on the board. Okay, Treetop Village. We're going old school here. Haven't seen that in a little while. Silvergill Adapt. Wow, deck is treating me well so far. And we'll reveal one of the cards the opponent knows about. Hey, <laughs> somebody's following me or something. <clears throat> okay, so that is, uh, <laughs> it is another black source if we want to cast Lurus next turn and start Bobble going. Uh, Liliana would be slightly annoying, but it looks like the opponent's just passing through, which is sad for them, if that's the case. And another bobble. So I think that means, you know, we can cast, like, two bobbles this turn. Uh, I'm gonna go to attacks, and then I'm gonna play Lurus. Uh, opponent says, um, <clears throat> I haven't played fish in a year. I'm gonna say, well, it's kind of in a weird place. Not many new Merfolk cards lately. All right, let's attack. This thing can't activate, so it can't do anything. Opponent knows I have a cavern. They know I have a bunch of two drops. Uh, opponent says, wizard screws over Merfolk super hard. I say, you're telling me. <clears throat> All right, so Silvergill getting in there, taking the opponent down to 14. Eventually, when the opponent passes priority. All right, so despite the fact that this is, first and foremost, a Merfolk beatdown deck, secondly, a Merfolk combo deck, it looks like <laughs> Lurus is just going to uh, like take over, basically. Opponents should probably, I don't even know, maybe they're holding up like a Abrupt Decay or something for Lurus. If it had a Savannah Lions, it would just make the deck complete. Yeah, sure. Well, we have uh, in, in, uh, in green. 
So we've got one of our uh, three watery graves here. I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to cast Luris. Yay. Luris. Definitely not a merfolk. And now we'll cast Bauble. <laughs> Fun, fair magic. We'll sacrifice Bauble, and we'll look at what the opponent's going to draw. And during the opponent's upkeep, we'll draw an extra card, because why not? We see a Stoneforge Mystic, and uh, we see that the opponent is uh, going to be stuck on mana for a little bit. So now we pass. Uh, maybe some removal on Loris, I guess, but no, not yet. And we know that they're drawing um, the Stoneforge. So I imagine they're probably going to scoop at some point. Um, and it looks like they might be doing that now since we're sort of lagging up. Yeah, there we go. Um, we do have Kumena's Speaker, but I don't love having to play green. I also don't love having to play black or Luris. But whatever. All right, let's begin sideboarding. How are you guys doing tonight? Super quiet. So let's see. It's like a Stoneforge Mystic. I guess it's like an Abzan. This is what you get when you play Qs. You just get to play against interesting decks. So definitely bringing in Spreading Seas. Um, opponent says, honestly, since it forces you to be green, I hate it. And I, we're, we're kind of on the same page. All right. Um, probably playing Tarmogoyfs. So I might want to bring in Spell Bombs. Scavenging ooze, that kind of stuff. Surely going to have removal. Unearth is probably still relevant. Um, so what five cards do I take out if I bring five cards in? It's like a weird combo deck. Um, with, um, <clears throat> with Stoneforge Mystic. I mean, the Meyer Tritons, I don't even really get, so you just cut those. Those are easy. <clears throat> Mono blue is the best version. Um, I agree. It's it's what I love uh, the best by far. Opponent says, yeah, mono blue. Mono blue best. Um, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Merfolk Joe, if you want to check it out sometime. Um, also streaming this right now. All right, we've got to cut three more cards. Um, Maybe just cut one of these spell bombs. It's probably not that important. It's not like a it's not like a graveyard combo deck, at least not that we've seen yet. Um, we'll keep. I don't see myself citing out the combo uh, in a lot of situations. Maybe these curse catchers are just poor, particularly on the draw. So, <clears throat> yeah, we don't really know what we're playing in. So I'm going to submit the deck like this. Reveal Luris and say okay. <clears throat> hey, <laughs> I can cast a spell with no lands. But this is not a keep. Way too greedy. <laughs> it may be really good if I just rip a land at the top. Well, it'd be pretty good if I rip a land at the top. Opponent is keeping seven. I'm going to mulligan. And uh, look at that. Zero lands again. It's like the exact same hand almost. Um, mulligan again. All right, well, so now we can keep this. Um, we will, I'm just organizing kind of how we want to do this. <clears throat> All right, so we've got a weird random combo piece, but that one's not relevant until after we've gotten rid of our entire library. So I feel like I can put that one at the bottom. Even though it is a creature, uh, I feel like Unearth is, is going to be better. I've got black mana. I, I've got access to... Um, I've got access to Luris. <clears throat> and so I do want, I think we do want Bobble in the opening hand since it's a bit more, uh, I, it's kind of a combo piece with our companion. So it's a way to totally make up for, um, <clears throat> for mulligans. All right, no hand disruption or anything. Uh, spreading Seas could be excellent. Going to bobble. Um, 
probably on the opponent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the bubble down now, but then probably wait until the end opponent's end step to actually crack it, just so they can't take the extra card with thought seize. I think that makes sense. Even though if they had thought seize, they would probably have cast it on turn one. All right, opponent is um, cracking the fetch land. I think my opponent is going to be like uh, the only one in chat after our match. You guys are being pretty lame this evening. So, opponent gets an overgrown tomb. We might see a uh, Stoneforge Mystic, since uh, that's one of the few cards that we saw last game. So uh, land in the next top two cards of the deck would be pretty awesome. Maybe Goyf, I guess, or something. Charm of Goyf. All right. I did bring in two of those uh, spell bomb thingies. So here we go. I'm going to see whatever is on top of the deck. Another Charm of Goyf. So we might just get beaten down. Let's draw a card. A. All right, so drawn right out of this uh, mulligan, I think I'm just going to play Spreading Seas. I don't really see many more options. Okay, Spreading Seas, potentially drawing me into the third land. Going to get Bobble going with Luris. Oh, did I just play pay Black Black? That's weird. <clears throat> so hopefully they don't have another green source and they can't play the Tarmogoyf that's on top of their deck. Another Spreading Seas. Mm, don't usually... Complain about drawing Spreading Seas against uh, these Jundi-type decks. But in this spot, I don't know, a little bit weird. Okay, well, they do have green, and we know they have another Goyf. I can go ahead and hide that, I guess. But I think we're going to see Maelstrom Pulse here. Okay. Uh, it seems a little bit... I don't know. A little bit questionable. Usually want to deal with my threats. Paradise Mantle, all right, and this is a stupid combo piece, but it does give me access to more mana, in theory. Uh, so uh, I think I'm just going to keep playing Spreading Seas. Uh, I could also... Like, Spreading Seas gets me closer to land, so I'd love to draw land. Uh, I could also just play Aether Vial. Aether Vial is probably, like, the more... Um, slows your tempo, but yeah, definitely a bad play. Um, spreading Seas is the more aggressive play, hoping to draw land. Um... I've lost trying to do that. I mean, getting Aether Ball down is probably better, particularly since the opponent um, has already spent one of their Maelstrom Pulses. Uh, I do like, you know, continuing to hit their mana. I'm just going to do that. Let's see if we get punished for it. All right, so that was a whiff. Oh, wait, I could play Paradise Mantle, but it's like, who cares, really? It's a zero drop. Opponent continues to hit their land drops, um, so I imagine we're going to see a second Tarmogoyf here. Uh, next turn, Silvergill is, is a good one to have drawn, even though it wasn't land. I don't know what the opponent's doing here. I mean, we know they have a Goyf. Um, he's holding up removal, I guess. Okay, sick. Um, sacrifice creature. Opponent's definitely playing, like, their own kind of, uh, their own kind of magic over there. Uh, Goyf is gigantic, though, and I'm probably going to lose this match at this point since I've whiffed on lands for two turns in a row. So, hey, the Maelstrom Pulse play actually worked out. Worked out really well for the opponent. Um, looks like a Trickster would be good at a certain point. All right, here's Goyf 2, I imagine. And if they play Liliana, it could just be Lights Out. Wow, this is really rough. Um, 
<laughs> at this point, yeah, I'm dead on board. I'm at like chump blocking state, so I'm just gonna play out the uh let's see, Thassa's Oracle is kinda like a scry. Alright. Um one on the top. Yeah, I can just chump or try to chump with Thassa and then maybe play um Luris next turn and chump block with Luris. If they remove the Thassa's Oracle, it's just lights out. Alright, so Look at all those lands. So what do I get to do here? Pick a card to put on top of your library. I will do that. Um, at this point, I guess we just want to take a colored source of mana. So the island is on top. All right, so GG. Um, I'm going to say GG, and then I'm going to scoop. So actually, you know, good job opponent, Maelstrom, Maelstrom Pulsing. Um, Totally got you there. Oh yeah, you guys. Um, I should have the uh, what's it called? Cardboard live. I did. I did update it. So I think it's over here on the left side of the screen. I, I think I might have changed one card. I think I'm playing like two muta vaults instead of three muta vaults. So <laughs> that third land got both of us. Opponent says. All right, so I guess I'll probably bring in the extra spell bomb uh, since Tarmogoyf is pretty graveyard dependent, and I really wouldn't be surprised if they were also running like scavenging ooze. Um, and some removal probably wouldn't be misplaced, but then you know maybe I go down on the combo in these kinds of matchups because they have lots of removal. I guess I don't know. You guys can tell me why my decisions are bad. But I just brought in more graveyard uh, hate, uh, more removal, took out the, the took out the combo stuff. Um, and that, that just seems better in this matchup. But <laughs> we're trying to test like a blue-black combo, right? So taking out the combo is a little bit corny. <laughs> All right, I would like to play first. All right, we're going to play Magic this game. Stupid double Paradise Mantle. <laughs> Normally against mid-range decks, we would side out some number of Aether Vials. Can't really explain exactly why I haven't done that here. Um, I guess the fact that I got Mana screwed in the last game, but we are running 20 lands, which is pretty normal. We usually trim a couple of Aether Vials, but I feel like the combo pieces are just a little bit worse. Cool. I'm glad that you agree with me, Stimpy. Um, they were, they were. I mean, I drew that Thassa's Oracle, and it would kind of did nothing. Um, <clears throat> opponent says spicy. Yeah, trying a brew from the internet. We're going to use Ether Vial's ability, and we draw land. Amazing, but not really, since whatever. Um, we're still like two lands away from being able to cast. Well, not necessarily since Paradise Mantle uh, makes black mana um, as well as every other color of mana. Mm, I guess we might as well play Paradise Mantles. Like, we're not going to storm off or something. I don't really see like a reason to. Oh, whatever. I'll keep it in hand. Uh, I don't know. Cost zero. Like. The combo, Mr. or Mrs. Horny Vegan, is, um, <clears throat> opponent, stop that. The combo is pretty stupid, actually. It's like, uh, you've got Pure Sight Marrow, which you can equip Paradise Mantle to, and then make mana, and then use the mana to untap Pure Sight Marrow, which every time you do that, it, um... It exiles a card from the top of your deck, and then you play Thassa's Oracle, and with an empty deck... <clears throat> you win the game. <laughs> uh, in the event that you do not have your combo online, then your bad merfolk are just bad merfolk. So I literally can't do anything here, so um, I'm going to activate Mutavault and attack the, the opponent. <laughs> because Mutavault's not doing anything. Or maybe I should just wait. Yeah, I'll be patient, whatever. Yeah. 
I've been tuning this deck for the last two days. No one plays Abzan. Uh, one of my good friends has always played Abzan. It's pretty sweet. Um, all right, so Scavenging Ooze. Um, I sort of called this one. That's why I brought in that extra Nile Spell Bomb. Opponent gets to start eating my stuff. Um, I don't have black mana, so... <laughs> Ether Fire on 2, and I can't put any Merfolk into play. It's such a sad state of affairs. I'd love to draw like a Silver Gill here. Ah, oh, this is so clunky. That's why I like Mono Blue Merfolk. Like, playing two colors just always like jams you up. Okay, well, we, we drew a land. That's, that's pretty cool. Um... So I guess the play here is push the Scoos and then um, <clears throat> then swing it with Mutavault. In response, he's almost certainly going to eat um, something from my graveyard, after which I'll just attack with Mutavault, right? And if he doesn't, then I just pass like I did before. I like getting Scoos off the board. Uh, that card can get super annoying. Okay, Mr. Tarmogoyf has entered the battlefield. Can I get a trickster? I mean, it's also like uh, we just kind of hit a wall. Um, you just have to like top deck, and it's just... <laughs> All right, another non luris casting land. This is fun. Opponent says, but midrange is just too slow, so I opted for Stoneforge. All right, so this is going to go exactly like last game uh, went. I'm just going to get the crap kicked out of me by Tarmogoyf. <laughs> well, I kept a one lander, and uh, I've drawn three lands, so now I have four lands. I still can't cast Luris. Uh, I have nothing. I guess, I, oh, I should have taken the Paradise Mantles out. <laughs> I left these Paradise Mantles in. How stupid. All right, well, at least this is a queue and not a league. That's pretty funny. All right, if I see a siege rhino, like <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna like bow to the opponent. Please play siege rhino, and then ephemerate it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna juke the opponent here. What could it be? I ask them. <laughs> Wasting everybody's time. I mean, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> I've never tried it before. And I, I started off the stream, I think, like, there weren't very, very many of you guys uh, with me at the very start this evening. I was just saying, like, you know, it's hard to get really inspired about um, where fish is, what is going on with the deck? Dios mio. Um, a little hard to get inspired about, um, about fish these days just because we're not getting new cards and uh, the metagame is just like bananas. Yeah, Phoenix, this is definitely not, like, a meta call. Like, I'm not trying to, uh, to break the format with this combo. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just having fun with, with unique-ish sort of merfolk strategies. If I lose every match this evening, I will not be surprised. I mean, I'll say it again. The way that this game has gone here is I kept a one-lander. I turned into a five-lander. Um... And I forgot to sideboard out like the worst combo piece. So a little bit on me, a little bit on the deck. <laughs> That's just kind of funny at this point. Uh, yeah, same on my side. Um, I'm just going to scoop this up. <sighs> Moving on. Uh, good games. Nice to see other fish players. Because opponent, um, oh yeah, hey, yeah, I could do that. That's actually a good call. Um, but I told the opponent I'm going to scoop. That's a good call. I could totally cast Luris here. Um, but opponent, opponent's been a good sport. Um, oh, he's asking me if he wants a fr friendly rematch. I could say, hold on, yeah, um, yeah, we could run it back. Um, in a queue, or.
Yeah, Cavern does cast Luris. So that's kind of dumb of me because I can just play Cavern and then play play a Lord, but I already I already scooped basically. Um I mean let's do tournament practice because um just to not randomly get sniped by another opponent and lose money. Uh all right. I'll go make a room. And I will um, specify friends only or whatever. Let me add this dude. Um, you guys can see like how terrible this little pop-up menu looks. Like wizards needs to get their their stuff together. They just did an update. What am I doing? I can't even read this. Add as a buddy. Okay. Well, that's that's it's another good question, Phoenix, and this is why you guys watch me because I make all the I make all the slick plays. Um, no, I've never played with Unearth, so I just saw a black card in my hand and didn't even think about cycling it. So um, I don't know if you guys are like that. The first time you play cards, like you just just make mistakes left and right. Um, but that's how I am. So let's create a room. I'm gonna say um, only buddies can join, two players, um, and I'm gonna create the room and wait for my opponent. So yes, I should have cycled on Earth. I should have played the Cavern, and I should have played uh, Lurus at that point. Like, if you're getting flooded, then of course playing Cavern on Nightmare or Cat or whatever um, just makes makes a ton of sense, since you don't really care if that extra land is just Lurus specific um, Good luck to you as well. So we're going to run back that same matchup. Um, here we have actually three lands and four spells. You can't really ask for more than that. Uh, so if you guys if you guys see me making some stupid play like not cycling a card for like eight turns, let me know. Because there's really no explanation other than just me being kind of stupid and not being used to these cards. But it's mostly the stupid part. All right, pawn takes Silvergill, good choice. Um, unearth, so we can cycle that card if we feel like it. Um, I'm just gonna go with like a. Uh, Watery Grave. It is two to cycle, right? Yep, two to cycle, one to cast. And, <clears throat> I mean, maybe Mire Triton is like the best card to run out. Opponent just passing through. Interesting for an Abzan deck that runs Tarmogoyf and Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, tempted to run out Spreading Seas again, but uh, we kind of got bitten by that in the last match. So probably better just to run out the Triton, get some stuff in the graveyard. Maybe we uh, we mill like a bobble, and then Lurus gets a little bit better. S such a weird inclusion. Um, I was saying at the beginning of the stream that this is like, um, it has to be like a sort of exploratory tech in this weird random sort of combo deck. Right. Untapped Godless Shrine. Is this going to be diabol Diabolical Edict again? It is. Opponents on like a playset of Diabolic Edicts. Lingering Souls. All right. Well, we've got sort of the Island Walk combo online here. Um, well, Bobble was a good draw. Okay, they have a Mystic on top of the deck, and I'm going to cast my Companion. It's going to keep me company, as good Companions always do. And I guess we have to wait, or should wait, to crack this bobble since we already know what's on top of the opponent's deck. <laughs> Boggles is pretty popular right now online. Is that just kind of a random comment? Am I not getting the context of, of Boggles being mentioned right now?
No, I mean Meyer Triton is definitely for Luris targets, but it I don't I don't know if it's actually good or not. But that is what it's for. Opponent not casting the uh, Stoneforge that we know that they have. Kaya's Guile. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Wow, all right. Getting blown out a little bit here. But I can unearth this guy, right? Which is pretty good. Oh, I can't because it exiled my graveyard. So unearth is <laughs> dead for the time being. Um, all right, I do get to draw another card. Yeah, gaining life is not terrible, right? So... Two unearths with no graveyard. That would actually be pretty sensational if, um, if he didn't just exile my entire graveyard. Kaya's Guile is like a real su surprisingly great card in modern. Um, any deck that runs black and white like should be including some some number of Kaya's Guiles. That card came out around the same time as Uro. It's a really good answer to Uro type decks. <clears throat> Oh, you're talking about... Oh, Siege Rhino. Yes. I'm going to say yes with capital letters. <clears throat> okay, we've got another bobble. Um, so this, these unearths can still potentially be pretty good. Uh, I, I think I just want to jam Spreading Seas on the green mana... And then play a lord and attack. Mutavault. That was actually a really good draw. Yeah, so I guess it was just uh, just before Uro. A couple months before. Cast. And then again, my understanding is, I mean, it seems like playing against Thoughtseize decks, you generally want to wait till the opponent's end step uh, to crack Mishra's Bobble so that you draw the card on your turn rather than the opponent's turn. I play uh, Soul Herder also and love me some Siege Rhino. Really nice that uh, just like the first match of the evening, I just got paired against like um, a former Merfolk player who just seems to be like a very nice person. I believe we have Lethal um, on board, uh, and particularly with this extra Lord in hand. So we know that they have a Stone Forge. That's not going to help them. Also, they don't have access to green, so things like Maelstrom Pulse and Abrupt Decay are offline, but not anymore because he has more green. What are we doing here? That white mana looked like well, maybe a path, maybe Stoneforge. We know one of the two cards in his hand is Stoneforge, so. One plays another Siege Rhino. They go up to 14. Oh, they just, they just conceded in this spot. Um, all right, so we'll begin sideboarding. All right, what did we do last time? We brought in the Graveyard Hate and Fatal Push and the two extra Spreading Seas. I'm going to take out all the stupid Paradise Mantles. Sorry, Paradise Mantle. No disrespect. Eh, couldn't make it. <laughs> okay, now nah, Meyer Triton can stay in the deck, I think. Uh, and then Thassa's Oracle can go away. And then I guess I took out both Curse Catchers last time, um, but left in three Paradise Mantles, which is pretty bad decision making. So we haven't even come, like, remotely close to even beginning the combo. I have to say, like, um, I know it's been, it's been literally, like, one and a half matches at this point. But this is pretty far away from what I like to do normally with Merfolk. Uh, 
I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of just m regular old mono blue, like just being a normal old school tribe, like elves basically, but with island walk and less mana. This, this is splashing a color for this overpowered companion and uh, running Mishra's bobble, which I think should be banned. It's just, I don't understand why, like, if Emery's in the format, which is already, like, very, very, very strong with, like, Engineered Explosives and Astrolabe and, and any number of other artifacts. Just not really sure why Mishra's Bobble gets to exist. Like, there's a, there's a ton of pretty strong um, artifact strategies in, in the format, and this is, I don't know. The card just seems like kind of, like, legacy, vintage-level... Um, I've said multiple times on the stream, it reminds me a lot of, like, Gitaxian Probe. Alright, so we drew the Flooded Strand, so I'm probably just going to play that now. Um, might as well, mm, maybe, uh, I don't know, like, I guess we keep Bobble in hand until, you know, we want to play it. So it doesn't get, like, huh. Or do I play it? What, what, what's the, like, the downside? There's no real downside, right? Um... It's just if I crack it, it goes into the graveyard now, and then they can just, like, Kaya's Guile, but whatever. I think I'll cast it anyway. I'd like to draw an extra card. I'm, like, pretty low on gas. All right, opponent once again without a two-drop. Um, they could just have Diabolic Edict, which looks like they're representing... Again, in, in this matchup, um, Silvergill is kind of like the best possible card. Assassin's Trophy, that's somewhat unfortunate. Trickster's a decent one. Means they can't cast Diabolic Edict. I do have Assassin's Trophy, though, so I play this out now, and they just Edict me right now. Eh, whatever. I don't know which card's more valuable, honestly. Like, I imagine they probably want to save some removal for, for Luris. All right, so not flooding out uh, too much. Nice to draw a non-land there. All right. Opponent Inquisition does, so they know about... Um, I think they know about all these lands, lords. They don't know about the push. Um, so... Definitely not gonna. I feel like I can just um, jam a Merfolk here, and just get it removed and just trade one for one. Do that for a little while. Eventually, cast Luris with a lot of lands out. Okay, so we know that they have Assassin's Trophy. I guess I was calling the diabolic the diabolic edict and you know don't actually know that they have it. It's probably just, you know, one of the ugh. On stream lately I've just been like flooding like crazy. So I you know, I guess it makes sense to play Hmm. At this point it just looks like they're representing Kaya's guile, right? So We can just play Luris and play the maybe play Ether Vial, right? Just I don't know. I guess play Bobble. Bobble is probably better than Ether Vial here. Attack first, I guess. Also, the, just the fact that this is a mid-range matchup and um, sideboarding out the combo, like making the stream not super interesting. And this is why this card is so dumb. It was like a free extra card in my opening hand, and this is why Mishra's Bobble is so dumb. Like, I get to just play it back and get, like, a free card draw. 
It's like plus two cards for no reason. Another path. Fair enough. I could push it but uh, for unearth, but I don't want to push my own creature. Also, um, nothing has left the battlefield yet this turn, so I don't have... Actually, is this just... Yeah, um, anyhow. Thinking out loud. Well, I've got all the mana in the world. And I guess I might as well just play this Lord now, right? And we know they have the trophy. He's just going to ramp me harder now. And yeah, I'm going to wait on the Mishra's Bobble. <clears throat> Actually, um, okay. Well, at least we get a redraw with Mishra's Bobble. Hopefully, it hits something, something reasonable. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> On well, no Siege Rhino yet. My opponent's on one card. We're going to be on four cards on our turn, but... Okay, Vern Catacombs on top. That's kind of nice to see. Maybe we'll just go all the way with Trickster. Six turn uh, clock at this point. Nice draws. Guess I could have played a Silver Guild add-up to see if I ripped the Lord off the top. A little bit hasty. Opponent knows about these lands. I might as well play them. I don't have any like looting effects in the deck. Also, probably should have waited to play the Silver Guild before I play the land, um, just in case I hit Mute of Alts, which would be like way better here. Okay, well, that's just kind of funny. Funny in a sad way. But opponents drawing lands too, so... <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I know that the opponent gave me three of these lands, but it's just like, what are the odds in a 20 land deck? Like, the first third of the deck having, I don't know, a bazillion lands in it. I guess maybe I'm not that far off the math, actually, right? Opponent says GG. Uh, GG's. Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to stream for another hour or so, at least, if you feel like joining. Um... Uh, I have three lands in hand. Um, all right, so cool. Um, um, all right. So that game, uh, or that, rather that match is over. I'll go back to the play lobby. Um, and yeah, I'll just jump into some more cues um, for your guys' hopeful entertainment. I mean, this is a kind of a weird deck. And I, di I didn't play particularly well in the first, uh, the first match. Didn't cycle unearth. Um, yeah, just not, not great. Hey, uh, are, are you my opponent from, from that match, I guess? Yeah, good, good. They were, they were fun games. Thank you very much uh, for the matches. Trying to find another opponent now. Uh, just jumped into another queue. Don't really feel uh, that excited to play like a league with this deck. It just feels like a pretty, pretty weak build of Merfolk. I mean, yes, we have Lures and we have Bobbles, uh, and that's always going to be powerful, but... I mean, even just like the blue-white build that I ran, I can just go look at that while we're waiting for opponents. All right, was it? This was one of the recent ones where I was trying to get like Master of Waves going, 
And uh, Master of Waves was actually um, like super good in the league that I ran with this. I think I ended up going like either two and three or three and two with this deck. With Master of Waves, I played against like two Jun decks, like two Prowess decks, like exactly what you'd hope to, or maybe it was two Ponza decks, like two uh, Obosh decks. Like exactly what you'd want to see uh, when you're playing Master of Waves. Feels like the metagame is really sort of well positioned for Master of Waves. Uh, so I feel like this has like a lot more potent potency than uh, this random combo deck that I'm trying out tonight. But I thought I'd keep it light this evening and um, try something that I have never played before. So you could queue up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I've got a few people uh, joining me this evening. We probably shouldn't just play. Uh, the Abzan matchup over and over and over again because I did sideboard out the combo against you. I don't, I don't know if you noticed. Actually, it was funny because I left in the Paradise Mantles when you said spicy, um, and that was just like a ridiculous sideboarding mistake. Um, I also had an Unearth in hand that I could have cycled that, that I just never did because I didn't have Black Mana, and I was like, oh, I can't cast Unearth. <laughs> kind of forgot the other half of that card. Hey, hey are we going to combo off, guys? Is that, is that what's happening here? So now we only have to draw. We only have to draw um, Paradise Mantle, have this guy not get killed, exile our entire deck, and then play Thassa's Oracle without having it get countered, um, and then we might win a game of Magic. Let's, let's see how it goes. It's not asking too much, is it? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep waiting on Bobble. Um, yeah, it, it was fun. Uh, fun games. I, I really like Abzan. Lingering Souls is a, is a really good deck. A really good card. Abzan is a really sweet deck. Uh, this could be a number of things. It could be like uh, Electro Dominance. It could be Storm. I mean, Storm is like the most likely. I guess we can just get a little closer to figuring it out right now. N another Serum Visions. That's kind of funny, actually. We get no closer to figuring out what the opponent is on. So I, don't, I guess if I have another combo piece, I'm supposed to jam this thing, but um, but I don't. So I don't think I'm supposed to jam that thing. Mm, I don't even know if I don't think I have any counter. I don't have any counter magic in the main deck at this build. Um, so where is this deck? Blue black. I have two curse catchers. I can uh, try to dig to curse catchers. I don't think that's going to help me very much. Now, if it is Storm, it seems like pushing as much damage as quickly as possible is probably the way to go. Um, but Silvergill is probably just fine to lead on here. We're probably um, probably going to play Lurus next turn. I guess if we want to just push damage, we do have Bobble. We don't have Vile, so we can't play that many creatures um, like every single every turn. I can't double spell until turn four. Let's see what I've got here. Wow. All right. Well, if we were gonna draw that, I guess that was a the best time to do so. <laughs> I feel like using Mana most efficiently is just playing Luris here. Opponent might just remand it, which would be kind of weird. Um, then we get Luris back in hand. Okay, <laughs> it's weird. I'm pretty sure this is Storm at this point. And I don't know, maybe they're just continuing to um, hold up like counter spells for for Luris, but I'm just gonna play Merfolk now. Um, although uh, Trickster could be good against like if they play out a cost reducing creature next turn, I could try to interrupt whatever they're doing with Trickster. Usually, if it gets to this point where they have a bunch of lands out, um, Trickster doesn't help a ton. Grape shot. All right, maybe I should have played out that second Lord. <clears throat> I 
All right, they're gonna combo off and then, oh, they're not. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. I thought they were just gonna sort of try to wrath my board. Looks like they're gonna try to go bigger. Uh, Uh, this is lethal if, uh, I guess, what, what what's happening here now? Are they going to cast? Okay, I think we just have lethal now. <sighs> Which one's the better combo deck, Storm or Pure Sight, Marrow, Merfolk? GG. Okay. We got there. Unexpectedly. We do have, I think, five uh, counter spells in the sideboard, if I remember correctly. Got two deprives. Uh, three force of negations. These numbers are so weird. Um, the Nile spell bombs. Uh, I think fatal push is probably relevant. We didn't see any cost reducing creatures, but they are storm staples. Curse catcher. Anything that can counter things. Uh, take out the spreading seas. And now we've got to trim uh, ten more cards. So once again, just going to take out all the stupid combo cards. Like, we can't possibly combo faster than, than Storm. I mean, it's, in general, Storm's not really trying to kill our stuff, right? So I can just take out Unearth, I can take out Mire Triton. Like, even just casting Lurus doesn't seem, like, amazing in this matchup because it's such, like, a grindy move, right? Oh, Paradise Mantles. Let's get rid of those things. Phoenix, I, d I don't know. Maybe, is this the first time you're joining me? I was being extremely sarcastic when I asked which is the better combo. <laughs> and you're answering, like, super seriously. Like, Storm is definitely the better combo. It's like, do you think so? Because I'm not sure. I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like a Pure Sight Marrow combo could be the next big thing in Modern. All right, so we really don't have... Uh, Maybe Unearth is just the next best card. Like the, the 59th and 60th best card in the deck in this matchup. <laughs> Murpho combo. I gotta like write an article about it and submit it to like MTG Goldfish. The thing about it though is like it's already been, I'm pretty sure like Seth has already had like a stream with it or something. Well, we've got the six sideboard hate here, um, but we don't have any lands at all. If I had one land, I might like think about keeping it, but I have to mulligan. Oh, this is so much better. All right, now I can't cast the two fatal pushes. I can cast the force, and Aether Vial is super important in this matchup, so I'm going to keep this. I'm going to ship one of the pushes. All right, no serum visions or anything. Opponent did keep seven, and that land uh, was was pretty slick. Get it? Nice top deck. But now we want to stop drawing lands, I think, for a little while. Hopefully, opponent holds up remand again. That would be nice. All right, Baral. I guess we just have to push that guy right away. <clears> hey, <throat> um, another land. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to give them a, an opportunity to do anything with this thing. A little awkward tempo-wise, but um, I guess once again we can just cast Lurus next turn. For fun. Mm, don't know if I want to counter this or not. I feel like it, it, sometimes it's hard to tell what you should counter. Uh, I'm going to let that go for now. Um, our hand is a little bit thin right now, so... Let's wait a little bit. Opponent gets Gifts and Desperate Ritual. Um, let's hide these lands. All right. Another Silver Gill. All 
All right, so cast Luris here. And then I guess I'm probably just going to vial in a Silver Gill, and if they try to cast anything, I can counter it either on my turn, my next turn, or on their turn. We know that they have a Gifts now in hand. So it makes sense for them to go for it, I guess, on their turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to pitch the Lord. I kind of just want to draw cards. So now we know the opponent has a Desperate Ritual. I, maybe I actually I should have vialed in Silvergill first. Maybe there's like a less a less uh, relevant card that I would have drawn, like maybe Curse Catcher, which I could have pitched and kept the Lord. Kind of kind of poor sequencing there. Uh, Trickster is like borderline, I think. Though I, I don't know. Maybe I would have pitched. I would have pitched this Trickster and kept the Lord. So just bad play right there. Um, Doesn't really matter here because I can cast Trickster with Cavern. Um, geez, I kind of want to thin the deck. Um, I'm not going to have to cast that many spells anyway, so I'll play the Flooded Strand here. All right, four turn clock. Let's go, Merfolk. Actually, it's less than that because I've got I've got the Silver Gill and Trickster, so I'm going to have nine on board. It's so a two turn clock from here. Opponent just passing through. Um, kind of feel like I can afford. Just crack. It's a two-turn clock here, basically, right? Like, crack in for seven. Next turn, I can flash in Trickster. I feel like leaving Trickster back is potentially relevant if they jam, you know, their cost reducer. So many lands. Just, like, all day, all night, all week, just constantly drawing lands. A braid on Luris, probably. Yep. All right, so slower clock than I thought. Um, potentially flashing in Trickster last turn was the, the way to go. Opponent would be at nine right now. I could have lethal if I draw Lord. If I um, if I had flashed in Trickster, opponent just passing. Um, so at this point, um, if I flash it in, I got a two-turn clock. If I attack, I go to seven. Mm, I guess we just play it, right? Whatever. I mean, if I if, if I play a Lord here, swing for nine, and there's no interaction, though with five cards in hand and playing nothing on their main phase, I'd be surprised if they didn't have anything. I mean, they might have, like, gifts uh, on my end step, which would be rough. But really, I'm, not, I'm just not threatening the opponent enough this, this game. Not really doing very much. Like, if any of these lands was something like a Nile Spell Bomb, we'd be, like, so much better positioned. Repealing the Curse Catcher uh, seems poor, but whatever. I guess they just need to draw cards. Lethal on board. Let's see what they can do. I'm running 20. Yeah, just like, uh, the list is um, the list is over here if you want to look at it, I believe. Okay, Monomorphos. Opponent just, like, still digging. We we killed their Baral earlier, and it seems like maybe they've been a little bit stuck since then. The only card we know they have is this Ritual in hand, so now I guess we just sit back. Maybe they're just going to make Goblins? Let's see what... The, oh, Past in Flames. All right, so it's off to the races, I guess, now. There is no payoff spell in the graveyard, unless I'm missing something. So they're just kind of digging still. Well, piece of the puzzle digs pretty deep. Um, they got another ritual and a remand. So still, we haven't seen any payoff spells yet. But they've got some more card draw in here, right? They've got, well, maybe not. Maybe they're, maybe, maybe they're just whiffing right now. Are they going to grape shot at this point? 
uh, another ritual. I guess they can keep casting rituals a little bit. Le okay, so they're going after my creatures. That's a good sign. All right, well, that was <laughs> unexceptional. But also unexceptional on my side of the table. We do have a two-turn clock as things stand, though. And a curse catch here to, to prevent Storm from casting any spells on their turn. It's like a time walk, basically, this guy. Okay, they went bottom-bottom, so that's something. Opt. And they're thinking about it. They went to the top. Maybe it's like a lightning bolt or something to kill our silver gill adept. That's what it, maybe it's a gifts and they're just waiting, but then it would get countered by Curse Catcher, so hmm. Maybe Curse Catcher is actually gonna win us the game. Mishra's bobble. Uh Alright. Three damage for the win. Opponent's lands like all hurt all hurt the opponent. I guess they can make colorless mana, right? I haven't had a game like this against Storm in a long time where like I just try to finish the job with like one Merfolk. It's like eh, eh. Three life, two life, one life. Alright. Clever play, clever play. Kudos. I feel like with these Luris lists, honestly, I should have known better before I before I started the league. I should have I should have run nineteen lands though. It, it wouldn't affect uh, obviously um, flood to this extent like that I'm experiencing. But when we're capping the uh, the curve at like two, past in flames, <laughs> yuck. Oh, another island. Well, there was sort of a, a glimpse of time there like a little moment flicker of hope where you know i thought i thought i could potentially win this game but they have pass and flames on the top of their deck though they already had pass and flames in the graveyard so maybe i'm not that afraid of it um but they've got a, they've got a bunch of stuff they can cast in the graveyard they should just go off right i mean uh they didn't really, didn't really need to draw the pass and flames but i guess they don't have the cost reducer so that's the problem just passing this is really weird Hmm. I'm gonna go for it. Get in there, Curse Catcher. <laughs> Get in there, Lord. Do Merfolk things. Oh, opponent. <laughs> What's up with all these lands? It's ridiculous. Like, if I had a force here, oh, it'd be so good. Well, it'd be better than what I have, I guess. Are they going to get a hand of, like, Lightning Bolt, a Braid, Grape... Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> graveyard, and... Why did they not go off on their turn? Again, I guess that they don't have a cost-reducing creature. But still, you can do it, for sure. Like, you've got rituals. If I win, this is like... A... This Storm player has to just, like be ashamed of themselves you should be ashamed opponent oh no i think they have something oh <laughs> they're trying to trying to do it this is a real nail biter oh they're gonna like opt noxious revival that would be pretty clever but hmm. noxious revival on lightning bolt i fail to see how one blue mana gets in there though Oh, opponent, are you losing to Curse Catcher? Come on. How quick can they do? Do they have Simeon Spirit Guide? <laughs> yes. Merfolk for the win. So I think it's pretty safe to say like we're winning despite the combo rather than because of the combo, but it's still pretty fun. Let's go ahead and jump into another one. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, though.
All right, guys, new plan. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to wait for this guy to, to get out of the queue because I don't want to play against Storm again. New plan. Uh, we're not sideboarding out the combo. Uh, if we have combo pieces in hand, we're jamming the combo pieces. We're going to try to win at least one game with the combo this evening. Uh, if we fail, we fail. Who cares? It's just magic. It's just random cues. I'm not in the Pro Tour right now. Um, I could just play against the Storm opponent again and just try to beat them with the better, the superior combo, right? But maybe I'll give it like 30 seconds. Again, I'm just... just we're going to get our butt kicked if we try to go for the combo against Storm. Actually, we'll probably get destroyed against basically any deck. But that, you know, it's like, why am I playing this if I just sideboard out the combo and just try to win with Island Walk every game? Kind of silly, huh? So, I mean, for those of you guys who are watching, if you, um, if you also play Merfolk, like, what kind of decks have you been playing lately? Like, are you sticking to Mono Blue? Are you trying Urian? Uh, like, um, I ran into an opponent the other day who was playing Urian with Merfolk. Uh, in the match, I was playing actually Soul Herder at that point, and in the two games, I won 2-0, and they never got to cast Urian. So um, in that sense, maybe it's like not the best choice since Merfolk doesn't really want to be a super grindy deck. Um, and then you have to run 80 cards, and then, you know, you have to sort of dilute your strategy a little bit. Um, so yeah, Ab Abzan Merfolk, is that what you've been on? Um, what should I call you? Is your name Lamb, I guess? Um, Lamb. Abzan Merfolk, huh? That is a bold choice in today's modern. Oh, this guy's hanging in there. Uh, I don't want to play against Storm. Even if I was playing regular Merfolk, like, I just, it's not a fun matchup. It's just a stupid deck. Alright, I don't know. Whatever. Let's play some magic. L? Alright, cool. L it is. You can call me Joe, because that's my name. <laughs> Rematch. This guy gets to show us what's up. Okay, Luris and combo pieces. Give it to me. Alright, alright. We're one third of the way there. Yes. A tiny bit of interaction with the Curse Catcher. Uh, we are on the draw, so it's going to be a little bit slow trying to catch him. Opponent's mulligating to five. We might just get there again. Need a win uh, to get to a league. You mean like you're low on tickets or whatever? Is that, is that what you're talking about? I'm confused. All right, Luris just reminding me that he's here. Uh, we are going to want two black sources to cast Luris at some point. Um, so I guess I'll just start with Watery Grave. I'll play Aether Vial. I could of course just play an island and then play Cabin of Souls naming Cat Nightmare. Have you guys noticed the little baby Luris in the art? Pretty awesome. Okay, I think we're gonna lose. Opponent mulligan to five, but this is this is how they want to start. All right, cool. So as I said, we are jamming the combo. So let's do it. Combo time. Honestly, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. Opponent plays a land, goes immediately for... Actually, I should probably get Curse Catcher on the board right now. Wait, wait, no. <laughs> oh, all right. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get this dude on the board right now, just in case they do try to cast... Like, play a land and then cast um, Gifts, just so I have the Curse Catcher to, to counter it. So we want to draw into um, Paradise Mantle. And then we want to draw into... Okay, so what did they find? They found an Opt and Grape Shot. That's pretty good pieces of the puzzle. Grape Shot. Um, well, let's see what they're targeting. Because this Curse Catcher is going to mess him up. 
So th this is on Curse Catcher, and these two are on Pure Sight. So I'm going to counter this one. Nice job, Curse Catcher. So opponent just grape shotted to kill a Curse Catcher. Like maybe it's good, you know, like maybe Curse Catcher is actually going to stop their plan from working. Mm. But I get to I get to cast Trickster, I guess. Paradise Mantle, where are you? Um Huh. Next turn I can cast Luris and Curse Catcher. Um can't do that this turn. I feel like just playing a Lord and then Trickstering is probably the way to go. Okay, so actually I get to look at the top card of my deck by untapping this thing, right? That's fancy. Get to attack, and then I can use this extra mana extremely efficiently to scry one, basically. It's kind of cool. Oh, is that what's going on right now? You're playing Storm as well? I don't know if I would call this playing against Storm. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. I'm just trying to combo with Pure Steel. Well, you know, pure Pure Sight? Pure Sight Marrow? Let's see how it goes. Opponent ops, and then Baral gets tapped. We take the upkeep, stop off. Opponent plays Shiv and Reef. They did miss a land last turn, I think. And hey, check this out. We get to use this guy for the first time. That's fun. Let's use it. Is it... Is it a land? Oh wait, I don't get to exile if I want to? What? I may exile it? How do I do that though? Man, <laughs> stupid MTGO. It's a lord, so of course I don't really want to exile it. Um, but I didn't see the option, which kind of bugs me. Wait, what? It was a... It showed me this lord. Did I exile it? I exiled it. <laughs> what am I doing? So hold. Did I? You may exile that card. It must have asked me, and I and I didn't and I didn't uh, see the the prompt or something. So I, I even though I mean Silver is pretty good. I guess I want to um, cast Luris and cast Curse Catcher. Right, just a little more interaction. Um, Not really sure if, how the timing of this um, is good or bad, like pre-attacks or post-attacks. Opponent remands. Okay, um, that's fair. <laughs> My plan has been crushed. Now this is this can't uh, be used to activate um, just to cast. So can't use this guy's ability again. Four four three would be eleven. Um, mm. Don't think this is game one. I don't think there's anything super. I guess I could draw like a another curse catcher. There's two in the deck. Swing for eight here. I mean, I kind of want to make my board kind of like robust against grape shot. Um, though they cast grape shot already last turn. Um, so the question is whether I want to violin the lord now and swing for eleven, or just get in for eight right now and violin the silvergill adept. Uh... I think just getting in for more damage is probably the way to go. It's what Merfolk does best. And really, if I'm trying to draw Curse Catcher, it's one out of 48 cards. No, 47 cards. All right, opponents, it's your time to shine. Uh, they've got two mana currently. Um, let's go like graveyard, graveyard, who cares? Yeah, they've got it. So 
that's what we expect to happen against Storm. Not really sure how we won in game uh, in game one, but I am going to try to push the combo again because that's what we're here to do this evening. And I knew what I was getting into when I played uh, when I jumped in against this uh, this Storm player. And so once again, we're going to bring in like twelve cards against Storm. Oh, actually, that's probably not probably not going to be the case anymore since I am going to try to win with the combo. Um, so, take out those Cs. That's easy. Uh, we'll take out Unearth. We just, honestly, we need to just make space. Um, Bobble, in theory, is supposed to help us draw into the combo. Um, but if I'm kind of being silly and heavily sideboarding against Storm while also trying to win with the combo specifically, um, I should probably side out non-combo pieces, right? Um, so I do like things that dig me to the combo. I might just sideboard out, like, lords. Like, if I don't win with the combo, then I'm not winning, right? Like, so let's just take out all of our lords. <laughs> all right, so we got some tricksters, got some oracles. Uh, maybe Meyer Triton is going to mill us one of these sick combo pieces, and then I'm going to play Lurus and get it back. All of, all of before Storm can beat me. All right, we've got our Paradise Mantles. We've got our Thassa's Oracles. Have you guys ever sideboarded out all eight Lords of Atlantis uh, and, and Master of the Pearl Trident? That is um, a play that you can only make with extensive experience with the deck, sideboarding out all your Lords. All right, well, this is... The deck is trying to help me win, despite my ridiculous sideboarding strategy. All right, we are certainly not going to attack with Mutavolt next turn, so I'll just play an island. You're playing against a Merfolk mirror now? It's like, it's so random. Like, Merfolk is like uh, less than a tenth of a percent of the metagame or something. A deck hooking me up with lands, as per tradition. Actually, I should take out uh, one of the lands since I, I did mention I wanted to do that. Play Curse Catcher. There we go. Right. Opponent, Lightning Bolt on the top. Dope. Oh, well, Force is okay. Love to draw Lord. Uh, no Lord, uh, but Watery Grave, huh? Can't attack at all. That's depressing. Oh wait, I can. I can just fatal push this guy. <laughs> I'd like to pay two life. So force is offline, but we're doing more folk things. Not comboing, despite extremely prioritizing it in our sideboarding. Come on, let's go. There we go. All right, opponent down to thirteen. Play land. Play pieces of the Aria of Flame. Huh. All right. Can't counter that with Curse Catcher. But we've got a pretty nice clock, and we can hold up counter magic if we feel like it. Um, a Lord would help a ton here. Also, another Black Land would be fine to cast um, Lurus. Meyer Triton. Um, well, it's going to gain us some life. Um, Play this land. Um, I don't really see the value of violing in this thing right now. Uh, I do see the value of holding up Force of Negation, though. Um, 
Swing for three, they go to eight. Next turn, I've got um, seven. <coughs> if I fire this up, I swing for five. Uh, it takes force offline for a minute, but I mean, they they didn't. They have to have another cost reducer, uh, be able to go around Curse Catcher. Um, kind of like just going for this. This only goes to the face, right? And they, it gains me 10 life first. Of, oh, it gained me 10 life already, huh? Yeah, only to creatures. Um, plus, I've got two more life from Meyer Triton. So, yeah, I'm going to get in there. Play to win. Pieces of the puzzle. Well, this looks promising. Oh, we do know they have a lightning bolt, but I should be able to sacrifice Curse Catcher um, and get in there still with six. Also, if they wait to cast lightning bolt till my turn, I can just um, play an island, have, an, have a hard cast force up. So what did they draw? They drew, um, or they got Monomorphos and Opt. Huh, so Monomorphos and Opt. We know they have a bolt. So let's just go to our end step. We'll activate uh, Meyer Triton. Oh no, Ether Vial. <laughs> We're gonna activate Ether Vial and put Meyer Triton in for the win. How is a storm opponent just getting beaten by these dorks? This is embarrassing. I'm like, literally winning just with like stupid grizzly bears. Game over opponent. End with 29 life. It's like extra embarrassing. Hmm. Nah. Could have sacked Curse Catcher just for like style points. I mean, if they have a force of negation of their own, then I could sack Curse Catcher to counter that. Okie dokie, uh, we're just going to run it back. No lords, no lords merfolk in favor of the obviously more powerful combo approach. Okay, four lands, no combo pieces. Opponent starts with seven. This is a. Uh, I mean, look, we've got interaction against Storm, right? We kill their, uh, kill their cost reducer, slow down their cost reducer. We don't have any combo pieces, right? How are we gonna win? We've got we've got black lands to cast Luris. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep this. Oh, is opponent just passing through their turn? They pass through their turn. I love it. <laughs> and we drew a counter spell. So things going pretty well over here. All right, so they got a Baral on top of their deck. They got to feel pretty bad about not playing a land on their first turn. But honestly, the tempo might not matter too much. Actually, I guess it does, right? Because I'm going to get to... Uh, hold, I can draw another land. Deck. Deck. I could just counter their Brawl. No, I think I'll push their Brawl, right? Jesus, all these lands. <laughs> it's like, how is this possible? So every single game... One, two, three, four, five, six lands out of 20. All right. So I'm going to let the Baral resolve. I'm going to flash in Trickster, and then I'm going to push him on... What? We know they have a Baral. What's going on? Opponent is too tricky for their own good, I think. Oh, my God. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna play Luris. Actually, you know, it'd be f hilarious. I'm gonna. I'm gonna name Cat or whatever with uh, 
with Cavern of Souls. Aha! <laughs> Next level opponent. They can remand uh, the Mishra's Bubble if they want. That'd be kind of fun. Oi. <laughs> well, this is actually pretty fun. Lightning Bolt. All right. Bummer. I thought they were holding up Remand. So now I could totally lose if they just uh, play Baral and then just like Ritual off, but whatever. We had to go for that. That was pretty fun. <laughs> naming naming Cat with, uh, oh, hey, Force of Negation. But no lands. So we do know that they have um, gifts. All right, cool. So that's done with. So I draw another land. I drew a combo piece. Nice. That is the goal this evening. Kind of want to thin the deck, so I'm going to play the Flooded Strand. Turn kill this thing. <clears throat> gonna attack. And uh I'm gonna play the, the, the combo merfolk here. Oh wait, wait, wait. I tried to cast it with the cat land. Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do that. So if the opponent draws a land, they still don't have too much uh, that they can do that I want to counter, I don't think. <clears throat> uh, opponent, what are you going to do? Let's see if we can get like a, a, an actual like correct a, um, activation of Pure Sight Marrow. Because I, I totally messed it up last time. Looks like opponent is missing land drops. We are inching closer to comboing them out. Uh oh. Keep going. More rituals. And maybe I want to counter like whatever their next spell is so they can't. Okay. I could, maybe they're just going to go for gifts. Nope. Oh, Baral. Okay. So what's next? Another ritual. This could then cast Grape Shot. You wipe my board. Um, kind of just want to counter this, but they could have Remand up. Um, whatever, you got it. All right, now they don't have Remand up. Okay. And no Grape Shot or anything. Land. Okay. Not a surprise. I can use my cat land to cycle that. All right, more combo pieces. It's exactly what we're looking for. Oh, you know what? I might have missed an opportunity to... Un no, I think he had summoning sickness. Uh, but I can untap him if the opponent doesn't uh, kill us on their turn. Did I not play a land? I don't know. I think I did not play a land. Doesn't really matter at this point. All right, let's do this correctly. What is it going to use its ability? Um, oh, it revealed what? Exile? No, I exiled that already. It's, it's showing me another Pure Sight Marrow, uh, so I may exile it. So I do want to use it, and that puts Pure Sight Marrow into the exile zone. Okay, so we learned how to use Pure Sight Marrow this evening. <laughs> Do you guys find this entertaining, like all these lands that I'm drawing? We get to use uh, two Pure Sight Marrow abilities this turn cycle. So use this opportunity to get the Dark Slick Shores down. And opponent 
casting repeal on one of my stick combo pieces before I was able to use it. Gifts ungiven. Why not? Oh, you know what? Uh, well, I'm not drawing any cards anyway. I was thinking maybe I could have uh, seen if there was like a force on the top or something. Mm. So, if we go like ritual, ritual into the graveyard, I don't think they can cast Pass in Flames, at least not this turn. Uh, maybe we can draw into a combo piece. If I put Pass in Flames and Monomorphos in the graveyard, for example, uh, they can now they can start casting stuff. I think so. I'm just gonna put the two rituals into the graveyard. The opponent could have another ritual, I guess. But now we know that they have Monomorphos. Oh, they have another land. That's dirty. And they have another ritual. <laughs> okay. Uh Hang on, I'm going to interrupt the opponent's combo to, uh, to check what's on top of our deck with this thing. Trickster. Uh, sure. Let's, let's not use it and keep Trickster on top of the deck. Seems like it could help us in this point. Ah, oh, man. I think I'm probably going to call the stream a little bit early. It's just like, oh, why are they lightning bolting my creatures? Well, at least I got a new follower this evening. It's more than I could have asked for. Uh, more than I could have hoped for with, with this particular build that I'm running this evening. Aria of Flame? I mean, all right, I don't know. Whatever. Grape Shot in the Graveyard. Let's let the opponent have some fun with Aria of Flame. All right, we go up to 29 life. That's cool. Opponent with a handful of cards. Graveyard full of cards. I feel like sometimes it's just nice to let the Storm player do their thing. They spent so much time, you know, picking each card out carefully. No How many Noxious Revivals should I play, you know? Oh, this build of Merfolk is so bad. It's so bad. I mean, like, <laughs> I want to be, I want to be the guy saying, like, well, you know, I can see the merit. You know, like in a certain meta game, like maybe you're gonna like, if everybody's playing this kind of deck, then maybe you're just gonna like surprise everybody with the with the combo out of nowhere. But it's just like it's okay. So opponent won. I think they got us with Aria. I wasn't even paying attention. I mean, like, what kind of deck is this Merfolk deck good against? Like, it's not good against control. Definitely not. It's not good against combo. Definitely not. It's not good against mid-range. Definitely not. It's not good against aggro, I don't think, right? Like, I mean, in theory, combo's supposed to, like, go over the top of aggro. But the aggro decks in the format right now run, like, Bill billions of lightning bolts <laughs> so like our stupid 2-2 two -two combo pieces just get bolted if we like it's like all right here's paradise mantle i'm gonna tap my pure sight and they're like no 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 you're not lightning bolt um so it's not good against aggro it's not good against combo it's not good against control it's not good against mid-range um honestly i think it's even worse like against it's not even good against the merfolk mirror like the merfolk mirror is just gonna like beat this deck up right it's going to have more lords it's going to have more muta vaults bah, i don't know like <laughs> crash and burn i guess we won a couple matches against oh no just the one match i think against abzan i think we just got crushed the first one then i did beat storm once somehow uh but at that point i was sideboarding out the combo and sideboarding in good cards um the second time, I did win a game against them, but I sideboarded out good cards and left in the bad cards. 
generally not a winning strategy. Um, so if there, if, if some of you guys in here are like huge proponents of this Murpho combo deck, I'm sorry that I have such a negative opinion of it, but I fail to see like literally any merit. Like <laughs> the fact that these garbage cards are not things like uh, Mero Rigiri or even more spreading seas or master of waves or just splashing green to run like actual like real merfolk cards <laughs> it's you know it's it's a cute attempt to play like you know semi combo -y pieces in 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 a deck that has you know island walk lords and that's that's sort of the long and short of it and i don't know in modern if you win one out of a hundred games with this silly combo i would be shocked uh, just shocked. So anyhow, um, <laughs> it was fun. I ha had a good time this evening. Uh, I wish uh, I was a little bit more stoked about one particular Merfolk build uh, that I could just jam day in, day out, and rack up wins with it and feel good about its place in the in the metagame right now. But honestly, I, I think you guys would agree with me. You know, we're just kind of trying to get by right now. Um, Luris and Bobble um, are almost necessary uh, before companion changes and even after companion changes they might be kind of necessary uh, to have the most competitive sort of version of merfolk um, since you know the reason Lur i guess luris if it's not obvious is is sort of strong in a deck like this is we naturally run two cmc and below anyway right so um the cost of running luris is pretty low and it just gives us access to sort of the degenerate um mishra's bobble and just recurring any of our two drops. If the opponent doesn't immediately have removal for Luris, which, um, you know, we've pretty much seen it just get killed every single game immediately. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the long and short of, of this deck. Um, we actually went two and two, which is basically how I do with my, my supposedly better version of Merfolk. Uh, so it's just, just a little bit depressing all around. <laughs> Not really, not really. Um, thanks to Byshark for letting me borrow these cards. Um, you are um, a great dude uh, for spending your time uh, to, to help me get set up for these streams and try these interesting builds. Um, I really appreciate it. And thanks anybody who's still around uh, for joining me this evening. Um, I really appreciate it. Give me a follow if you haven't done that yet. Um, I'll be back next, maybe this weekend, but definitely on Monday for a Soul Herder stream. Um, so if you guys want to join me, uh, I'll see you there. Thanks again. Bye-bye.